so hello boys and girls hopefully you haven't forgotten me this is Christy remember I work at the Hayes Presidential Library and Museums and normally I come to you once a month um, on behalf of the Fremont Rotary Club and I read a story to you and I haven't been able to come to your classroom since your schools have been closed so I talked with your teacher Mrs. Wendling and we thought that it would be fun for me to record myself reading the stories to you that way you can still continue to hear the stories even though you're not at school so so the first, first story I have to read you, this is um, officially for the first grade uh, students who are part of Mrs. Wendling's class, but even the kindergartners, I think you'll appreciate this story too. So this book is called They Say Blue, and um, it's written by a woman named Jillian Tamaki, and Jillian is also the illustrator. So she is both the author and the illustrator of this book. But before we start reading it, you know, usually I have a few questions to ask you. So when we look at the title, They Say Blue, let's make some guesses or some predictions. Let's express our curiosity, what we think this book might be about. And of course, the title gives us a hint. Uh, blue is the color. So presumably, we're going to guess that this book is about things that are blue. So uh, even though we're not together right now, why don't you look around your house right now and see if there are any things that are blue around you and notice those things. Take a look and maybe make a mental list in your head of things that are blue. And if you have a grown up or a maybe you have a sibling at home with you, you can tell them that you've noticed uh, in your house that these and these and these things are blue. So the other thing we might be curious about when we look at the cover of this book is it has all these wonderful birds here. So where are the birds going? What are the birds doing? Where are they flying to? So um, let's see if we can find that out uh, as we read the book. They say blue is the color of the sky. And we can see it almost looks like the wind here moving around on the pages. Which is true today. They say the sea is blue too. It certainly looks like it from here. But when I hold the water in my hands, it's as clear as glass. I toss it up in the air to make diamonds. Now let's talk a little bit right here. We'll pause our story for just a second because um, we want to, want to talk to you and explain the differences between similes and metaphors. So in other books that you're maybe reading right now or you might be talking in your class about similes and metaphors. So a simile is when you compare things. So we have a simile here that says the water is as clear as glass. So our character here, this young girl, she's making a comparison between the water and glass. This over here is a metaphor. I toss it up in the air to make diamonds. Well, she's not really making diamonds, but if you've ever seen the light sparkle on water, it does look like diamonds. So a metaphor is comparing something that's not, or, or it's describing something in a, in a metaphoric way, meaning it's not real, but we still get this beautiful picture in our minds. That's what a metaphor does. It creates this picture in our, in our imagination. So we are imagining that the water is diamonds, but in reality, it's still really water. So that's a metaphor. What about a blue whale? Is a blue whale blue? I don't know. I've never seen a blue whale. Now here in the uh, picture, the artist has drawn the colors to look like a blue whale. Um, I don't think there's actually a blue whale swimming under our little girl here. Otherwise, she'd probably be startled by the whale that's there. But it's definitely artistically woven into the picture, which I think is a beautiful thing to do. But I don't need to crack an egg to know what holds an orange yolk inside. And I can't see my blood, but I know it's red. It moves around my body even when I am perfectly still. And when we play, I feel it race faster to keep up. A field of grass looks like a golden ocean. If I build a boat that was light enough, maybe I could sail upon it. Gray clouds, 
a storm is coming. I could never build a boat light enough to sail on a golden ocean. It's just plain old yellow grass anyway. But wasn't it neat that her imagination was picturing it as in an ocean? I think that's pretty cool. They say spring means winter's over, but why does it still feel so cold? Oh, could purple mean something new? So maybe you guys could take a look around your yards because some spring flowers might be starting to pop up. In fact, here at Spiegel Grove on our grounds, we have lots of yellow flowers right now, wildflowers that are starting to pop up. So the author is indicating to us here that when you see start to see some color coming up in the plants like this, spring is not too far away. It's warm at last. Now she can finally take her her winter clothes off and wear something that's a little bit warmer. So look at the color change here. Isn't that interesting as it changes? I stretch to the sky with my fingers open wide. I sprouted. So look what the author has done here artistically. Our character, our young girl here, has turned into a tree. Do you ever feel like that when you stretch? You see some of the beautiful trees that we have out around our community. You ever stretch to the sky and feel like you could turn into a tree? Standing tall, I angle my green leaves to feel the sun. I think I'll stay quiet and listen to the sounds of the summer. And here in our drawing, we have lots of insects and animals, people playing, lots of sounds that you could hear if you're quiet enough and just focus on listening. Fall arrives and my leaves slowly turn brown. I drop them one by one and wiggle my toes in the soft pile at my feet. Winters come again. Now the rest of the world is quiet too. all white up and down. Sometimes I can't tell the difference between the land and sky. I close my eyes. Oh, I'm so sleepy. Black is the color of my hair. My mother parts it every morning, like opening a window. Now that's a, that's a simile there again, because we're comparing. She's parting her hair like you would open a window. So that's a comparison. Together, we watch the black crows bob and chatter in the field outside. So maybe these are our birds from the front cover that we were wondering about when they would, might make an appearance in the story. We wonder what they are thinking when they look at us what they see. Their dark eyes won't tell. They just pull their big bodies into the air. Tiny ink blots on a sea of sky. And look at all the beautiful colors in that sky. And that's the end. So this story is basically about a young girl who really starts to pay attention on the colors of her world. So I hope that you will give that some thought too, that as you're moving around your house or outside that you can really pay attention to some of those colors that are around you. So I will leave this book with Mrs. Wendling and when you get back to school, you can read it yourself if you like. <laughs>